Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. We're carrying on with our achieved questions focus and I've got the ones from the 2018 exam and we're going to step through each of them step by step. So let's have a look at question 13. Question number 13 and we've been asked to simplify the equation 25m to the power of 16 and all of that is to the power of one half. So this question, the, there's a couple things that I'm liking when I see this question. I can see the power of a one half, and straight away I know that's meaning a square root. And I can see two parts inside the bracket, 25 and m to the power of 16. So they're different things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split up the 25 and the m16. So that's going to be equals, and then in brackets, 25 to the power of one half times, because that's 25 times m to the power of 16, and that's m to the power of 16 to the power of 1 half. Now that I've done that, each part is actually pretty easy to deal with in isolation. As I said, the power of 1 half is a square root, so that's going to become the square root of 25. So I've simplified that, but I'm now going to times it by m to the power of 16, all to the power of 1 half. And we're dealing with a bracket rule. So when you're dealing with brackets, you multiply the powers. So it's going to be m to the power of 16 times 1 half. I'm now going to do my final simplifying. The square root of 25 is 5. And 16 times 1 half is 8. So that, that means our final simplified answer would be 5 times m to the power of 8. All right, we're now on to question number 14. Question 14, simplify fully. We've got this expression, leaving your answer as a positive index. So just a reminder, normally negative powers and fraction powers from above, normally they're considered not simple. So you should be trying to make it whole numbers or positive numbers. So let's jot down our question. So we've got 4 divided by 3a, and all of that has a power of negative 2. So the first step I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be kind of expanding the brackets, getting rid of that negative 2. So that negative 2 applies to the top and to the bottom. So let's go ahead and expand that. So there are a few different ways, but that's how I would do it. So it would be 4 to the power of negative 2 divided by 3a to the power of negative 2. Once I've got this, I've got two negative powers. I'm going to do a bit of a switching trick and make them positive. So if I have this negative power and I move it to the denominator, so that's 4 squared, that power becomes positive, and that's what the question's asking us to do, a positive index. And I can do the same. I'm going to move the denominator to the numerator, and that's going to change the power to positive. It's going to be 3a squared. I'm now going to expand those brackets. So the first one, that's going to be 3 squared times a squared. And the bottom one is just going to become 16. And I'm going to finish up simplifying the top. 3 squared is 9. And then we've got a squared divided by 16. We're now up to question 15. Before we start this question, just need to recap a bit of these log rules. So um, when you're dealing with a regular log equation, the way I remember it is b base to the power normally comes up with an answer. Make that a a bit clearer. And we can switch back and forth from the log version of that. So remember it's log. The base sits underneath the log of the answer is equal to the power. So we can switch back and forth between these two equations to manipulate equations. So what we've got here is we've got the first version, or the log, sorry, the second version, the log answer. We're now going to switch back to the regular equation. So let's get into that. So we've got log x. So that x there would be the base, um, 243. That there would be the answer is equal to 5, which is the power. So we're just going to change it into the other form. So the b, that's going to be x, to the power of 5 is going to be equal to 243. 
now that we've got this, we've just got a x with a power. We're just going to get rid of the power by doing the opposite. So we're going to be x is going to be equal to the fifth root of 243. And normally I'll just use a calculator to get this. Plug that into my calculator. I'm going to get 3 as my final answer. Okay, so we're now up to question number 16. Um, I've left the formula or the equations from the previous question up. Question 16 has a similar theme. Um, you can see it's got log 3 um, in a bracket, so 4 minus m minus 1. So log 3, 4m minus 1 equals 2. Our first step is to switch this equation, so that 3 is the base. This here is the answer, and that 2 over there is the power. So that there is going to become 3, or the base to the power, equals 4m minus 1. And this equation here, really simple, once you got into this form, you might have done it even in year 9, year 10. 3 squared is equal to 9, equals 4m minus 1, and then I'm going to go plus 1 plus 1. 10 is equal to 4m, divide by 4, divide by 4. 10 over 4 equals m, and our final answer, m, simplify that fraction, equals 5 over 2. Um, you may convert that to 2.5, but I try to leave my answers as simplified fractions when I can. Okay, we're up to question 17, and it looks like we've got a quadratic equation because of that x squared. Straight away, I'm thinking, um, I can either factorize, I can solve, I can complete the square, I can use my calculator, I can use my graphics calculator. Um, but let's factorize here. So question 17, 12x squared minus 5x is equal to 2. Um, quadratic equations have to be equal to 0, so I'm just going to get rid of that 2. I'm going to go minus 2, minus 2. So that there is 12x squared minus 5x equals Oh, gosh, I forgot the minus 2. Minus 2 equals to 0. At this step here, you could jump in, use your calculator straight away. A is equal to 12. B is equal to negative 5. C is equal to negative 2. And your calculator will spit out your two answers for x there. Um, but I'm going to carry on. I'm going to use a different method um, just to show you something else. Um, so x squared over there. I can see there is a number in front of the x squared, which means I'm going to have to use the grouping method. And we're going to go 12 times negative 2. That there is negative 24. I've now got to think, well, what numbers multiply to negative 24 and to negative 5? And I'm thinking negative 8 and positive 3. So they add to negative 5, multiply to negative 24. And I'm now going to split this bit up here. So 12x squared minus 8x plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. And hopefully you can see what I've done there. Minus 8x plus 3x, that's that minus 5x before. So it's the same thing. I've split it up based on those two numbers I identified. I'm now going to factorize. I'm going to factorize the first pair and then the second pair. So 12 and 8, they've got a 4 in common. x squared and x have an x in common. That's going to leave us with 3x minus 2. 3x and minus 2 only got a 1 in common. So it looks like they've got nothing in common, but they do have that 1 there. Um, and the same thing. I know I've done this right because that bracket's the same. If the bracket's different, it probably means you've done a math error somewhere. We've got 4x plus 1, 3x minus 2. That is equal to 0. And I can now find my two solutions based on the equation. So 4x plus 1 equals 0. 4x equals minus 1. The first answer, or x1, is equal to negative 1 over 4. Now I'm going to do the same for the second bracket for my second answer. Negative 3x minus 2 equals 0. 3x is equal to 2. x2 is equal to 2 over 3. And there's my second answer. There would have matched the two answers from the calculator um, if you did it via the calculator method. A final question, question number 18. And like for the previous question, we've been asked to solve. Um, so let's write down our equation. x plus 1 minus 3 over x is equal to 0. So the first thing I've noted is I can see x on the denominator. And that's always really annoying. And the way I can get rid of that, if that's a divide by x. If I times that by x, it's going to cancel each other out. 
But because this is an equation, if I times one part by x, I've got to times all of the parts by x. And that there will keep the seesaw kind of balanced. So x times x is x squared. 1 times x is x. That becomes 3x divided by x. And that becomes 0 times x. Um, let's simplify that. So that's going to be x squared plus x. These two x's cancel each other out, leaving us with 3. 0 times x, still 0. This stage here, you've got a quadratic equation and it's equal to zero. You've got heaps of options to choose. You can factorize, complete, square, use the graphics calculator. But I do want to encourage us, the graphics calculator is the quickest route for in an exam. Less likely to make a mistake or a little math error as well. So A is 1, B is 1, C is minus 3. And you put those into your calculators, you're going to get two answers, X1 and X2. And the first answer, one point. 3028. I've rounded to 4dp. I always round to 4dp, just my own thing. And then negative 2.303. And again, that also had a 4dp rounding. Oh gosh, 3dp rounding. Let's change that. 77 or 278. And now it's got 4dp rounding. So that was the achieved questions from the 2018 exam. Hopefully you found them useful. Um, if you haven't already, get into some merit questions.